Oh man, what's going on YouTube? 905 Man here doing a video. This is the start of my 180. When I switched over from the 120, moved into the 180, this is what it looked like. It hasn't been easy, but it's gotten a lot nicer since uh, January. This is when I pretty much set up my tank. But now, I have a different problem. I have uh, these star polyps. Not green star polyps, but these uh, what I call daisies all over the place. They just kind of, you know, went from small to an explosion. Uh, one little patch and then rapidly spread overnight. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, trim up these star polyps, these uh, daisies. Cut them up off of the rock uh, because, you know what, they are messing up some of my nicer frags. Uh, this is Red Planet right here, and I don't know if you can tell from the color... But it's a, a really nice one, but I, I need to get rid of some of these daisies. The way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to go ahead and get that razor blade, start scraping, start peeling these babies off. And this is why, because it's such a nice piece. I've always wanted Red Planet. I've uh, been keeping it successfully, knock on wood. But you can see some of the deep reds that it has. This one has a little bit more uh, green. But uh, the red that it does have is pretty sweet. Let me show you a little bit of that color right there. Um, this piece that I got, I actually got from a Cultivated Reef. Um, I started off with a really tiny frag. That right there is uh, some of the Battle Coral. And you can see that it's looking real good. But here is the Cultivated Reef piece. I got it. It was really small. It was starting to grow. I've had it for several years now and it's doing good. I did have another piece originally and I... Picked it up. I ended up killing it right away. Uh, but this one I've had for a while. So hopefully it sticks around. I just want to show you this difference in the color that I got from uh, Battle Corals. That top piece right there. Um, I forgot the name of it. But it's colored up really, really nice. Kind of looks similar to my Red Planet. Uh, which is cool with me. Um, but I don't think it was called a Red Planet. I forgot the name of it from uh, Battle Corals. He did label it. I just got to look back at the video right there and uh, I'll be able to figure it out. The other day I was messing around with the live stream, the YouTube live stream. Uh, I wasn't able to turn my camera sideways. I did turn it sideways, but uh, for whatever reason, I think it was only recording straight up and down. So it wasn't that good of a video. It was more fun, you know, talking and interacting with everybody. But as far as live streams go, um, I, I still got to play around with it and figure it out. Check out this big, ass piece of frog spawn uh, this piece actually broke because I was messing around with my tank I was taking out some of the rocks and the corals to scrape off those daisies and I accidentally broke this I'm gonna go ahead and move one of these pieces into my frag tank see how it does and go from there uh, to fix up some of the pieces I'm gonna use some of this reef welder got this from Marine Depot you just heat it up with some hot water I got some pieces in here that I'm actually going to reuse, see how that goes, and get these things cemented in the tank. I got several pieces that I need to cement, and uh, basically I'm going to be doing it with plastic. The curing time is instant, basically. It goes from hot, and as soon as it hits that cold point, it's done. One thing that I want to tell you about the reef welder that I've noticed, I still haven't gotten any of that coralline growth on it. So if you're going to get some, might as well go ahead and get the purple stuff. It's already, uh, it turns purple instead of staying uh, bright white. Uh, eventually, hopefully my stuff will turn purple because uh, the white is a little bit, um, it's a little bit of an eyesore. But it does a good job holding up the uh, coral. So with that, you know, get the purple stuff. Uh, my stuff hasn't been tur turning as purple as I'd like. Let's go ahead and get a closer look at some of these corals now. Uh, you can see that I used uh, that reef welder to hang up these uh, hammers that I had. And the reason that I moved the hammer is because you know, I accidentally broke it. I didn't want to use super glue as what I did to hold it last time. And so with that reef welder worked great. Some of these favias though, let me tell you, this is a cornbread favia that I picked up from uh, a local reefer. Uh, this is a toxic uh, LPS that I have right now. I don't know the name of it. And then these zoas on the live stream that I discussed, I only had one head of those zoas um, because I got them from Jay Bliss. He sent them to the U.S. Postal Service, and the U.S. Postal Service ended up sending my zoas all the way up to New York City. Then from New York City, it came all the way to El Paso, 
where I got those um, in a hot box. Thanks to the U.S. Postal Service, pretty much killed everything except for those I was able to bring those back and save them. Uh, this is my blue bubblegum digi. I'm trying to zoom in. Uh, of course, I got that green bird's nest in the background. It's pretty cool just because of the dense uh, polyps. But this blue digi is pretty awesome. It's starting to grow. Um, it's mostly looks like a forest fire digi with the red. But instead of so much green, it's blue. So that's sweet. Let me give you a close-up of the green purple hammers. Started off with a tiny frag of this. And it's starting to grow uh, really nicely. And I have a few of these frags in my 40-gallon breeder uh, to grow out. And then I'll frag them out later on. I'd like to know uh, what you guys picked up at Reef of Palooza. Um, from what I understand, Reef of Palooza is more about frags, right? Then Macna is about equipment. Am I correct? Uh, I haven't been to any of those big shows or anything like that. All you East Coast, West Coast reefers uh, most definitely have it uh, good by being able to make it out to some of those shows. As far as my tank goes, um, fish, uh, the only other fish is that I want to add. It's uh, maybe some smaller Antheus, some blue-green Chromis or something. And uh, Achilles Tang would be my number one. Um, I would like to just go ahead and add a yellow Tang, maybe. But uh, an Achilles Tang would be sweet. And, uh, of course, Coral. I have lots of room for Coral. This is my Jack-O-Lantern Coral that I picked up from the Coral Reef Shop. And uh, I put it on this shelf rock because I want this to encrust and make take just grow all over this uh, shelf rock you can see that the little sweepers are right there but this thing looks awesome at night um, you know it's orange it's simple it has the cool the cool eyes and uh, the sweepers are pretty cool I don't want to put any coral next to it uh, because I can imagine that it will do some damage to some of the other corals I am gonna go ahead and clean up some of these frags um, some of these frags I have replicas of a duplicates and I'm going to be moving those duplicates into the 40 gallon breeder. The 40 gallon breeder has been pretty stable. Um, no problems with the some of the sticks that I put in there. You know, the polyps are doing good. I do have a little issue with like bubble algae and things like that that I've been uh, dealing with. I've just been pulling out the frags and then just peeling off the uh, bubble algae. I probably will just get some uh, emerald crabs as a cleanup crew and let them work. I do have a couple of snails in the 40 breeder, which I need to give you guys an update so you guys can see for yourself how it's going and things like that. Pretty much I just like growing the corals out, fragging them, and then uh, just leaving them in there to grow. The light that I have on that 40 breeder is real simple, but the bulbs uh, do a great job and the fixture overall is a really nice fixture. Now I do want to show you a couple of these purple heads that I have on the leather. Um, I start off with one. And I only had one because I had those Asterina starfish. Asterina starfish went to town. They ate up a lot of my stuff. They ate up hornets. Um, a lot of cool zoas that I had. And uh, it's starting to make a, a comeback. I haven't seen any more Asterinas. But also you can see on the red planet that uh, I didn't, wasn't able to get up all of the daisy polyps. Which I'm going to go ahead and do a second sweep and try to get out as much daisy polyps as possible. We could just see why, because um, if you're not com careful, they'll just start growing and they literally just take off once you're not expecting them to. The funny thing is I offered some to my buddy Tim when uh, Tim came over. I still gotta give him some frags because he is always hooking me up. But I literally offered some to him and he, was the, he did a smart thing and he uh, didn't take any. Uh, this is the frog spawn right here. Just the single branch, I had two branches of that up there, and just with the single one, it's done real good. These zoas right here, I picked them up from uh, the Coral Reef, LFS. I got a couple, like two heads on them, and now you can see that they have, have taken off like everything. You know, more daisies, leather's doing good, the sticks are doing good. Uh, I have coralline all over the place, but I want to show you this, uh, this chalice right here has pretty much taken off started off as a little tiny piece and then now you can see that it's a it's a good size um, my anemone I'm gonna move that sucker because it's causing me some uh, little issues right there I'm gonna finish cleaning up the tank some more 
and uh, go from there, guys. But it is fun having a big tank. Um, sometimes I'm I'm like wondering if I made the right choice by going to a 180. And I gotta say that I just gotta that I overall I really enjoy having a big tank. Um, I think a 150 would have been a sweet spot, but the six feet long tank just gives me more room to do whatever I want with the with this. Uh, the 200s, getting a two something is I probably would never do. Uh, I think 180 is the biggest that I'm gonna go to. And if anything, if I do downgrade, you know, years from now, it'll probably be down to like a 150 or something like that, one of those Red Seas or something like that. Um, but for now, I'm gonna stick it out, keep this tank because I really enjoy it. Uh, it's just the amount of water that I go through. I have a 20 gallon auto top off. You know, the water changes are a lot bigger. It's not like, you know, where back in the day with the five gallon water changes was good enough. But uh, it's cool also having a big tank because you can do a lot more with it. So I got, I guess it has its goods and its bad also. Um, you can see that the bird's nest though. This grew huge. I'm probably going to chop it up because uh, I'm not really sure that I like what it looks like. And you can also see that red digi right there. Forest fire digi. Um, I picked that up from a cultivated, not cultivated reef, but battle corals. I won it on the nine stick nate contest, which was sweet. And uh, it's doing really good. All my other sticks are doing good. Uh, torches are doing good. For the most part, everything is doing well. Just got to keep my eye on that alkalinity. I'm going to use that Hannah checker that my buddy Tim gave me. Uh, check. I've been, I actually been testing and using the Red Sea. I haven't dropped anymore to the last time I dropped. I dropped all the way down to 5 DKH. And uh, surprisingly, a lot of my corals were okay, except for the green and purple branchy Montipora. Uh, the red Montipora took a hit, but everything else, LPS and the sticks that I do have, have uh, done really good uh, well guys I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here hope you guys have a good one enjoy your day thanks for watching you guys take care like and subscribe and we'll see you next time